Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talking About Birds, the only Cardinal podcast that, like Cardinal broadcasts, are about to black out. My name is Nate Heininger, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Ben Samorka. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Bring in the energy. And this week, among many things, we are going to continue to touch on the updates from spring training. We're going to continue our series on NL Central, focusing on the Pittsburgh Pirates. And we are going to take a look at the World Baseball Classic. idea for the opening bit tweet us at talk about birds ben i am here to report on an experience i had over the weekend we talked about it a little bit last week i know you love to hate things so i'm <laughs> sorry i'm gonna make you listen to me for a did little you bit enjoy more. something oh I did. crap i already know yeah okay yeah i enjoyed oi. something. oi yeah uh, wait, I, the footy match I've got a, I went to the home opener for St. Louis city on Saturday night. And I've just got one thing to say, Oh, it's a right. Good time. Isn't it? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, you kind of beat me to it with, uh, with, with the accent there. But, I'm so uh, glad I stomped on that terrible bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had a wonderful time now, of course. I'm a fan of pomp and circumstance. You got 20,000 people there all like super jazzed. So I, I was set up, you know, to enjoy it. And I was there with some good friends. Shout out to Joe, friend of the show who uh, helped hook me up with the ticket and also basically explained how the entire sport of soccer works for me uh, oh, wow. throughout, throughout the entire match. Um, but I had a really great time. It was First of all, uh, it was a it was a good match. Like I've never really watched a full game of soccer, and I enjoyed it. Uh, the 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 home team won. Uh, there is a there is a chaotic aggression to live soccer that I was not expecting. I know it's kind of the like the the hooligans, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. And I know that's a theme, or that's like a thing, right? That's like a trope, but I. But I wasn't expecting it to the degree that I experienced it. And it really boils down to one thing that really, really made me laugh. That is, I think, a fundamental difference between soccer and any other sporting event that I've ever been to, which is that. So we all know the concept of flopping, right? Like, even if you yeah. don't know soccer, you know, someone pretends to be hurt more than they were or even pretends to be hurt at all to run down the clock. Uh, I didn't know this about soccer, but the clock never stops. Yeah. Um, and I so, knew that. yeah, I knew nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and be, I guess that the concept of flopping is so prevalent and so reviled that any time someone from the opposing team would fall down like they were hurt, the entire stadium erupt in booing. <laughs> so, like in any other sport, if someone like is hit hard, collapses whatever it is and they go down hard the stadium usually is quiet sure in, in soccer everyone's screaming like boo get up you know just raw aggression anger at this person for getting hurt like there was a real injury in the game <laughs> and yeah. like i don't know how long people booed before they realized like okay maybe this guy is it needs actual medical attention and it was wow. like a full it was a full delay and I just thought that was so funny. Like what other sport is your initial reaction to someone getting hurt to just like boo them viciously. <laughs> uh, but it was fun. And uh, there was all these chanting and like the, the songs and, you know, I love a good pun. So lots of goal puns, like lot, like lots of chants that take pop culture things and replace it with the word goal. <laughs> so do so, they like hand out song books when you are walking in? How does everybody know what to sing? Well, there, so no, there were the no team has not. existed for one second, right? Yes and no. So there's, 
St. Louis has had a huge soccer culture for years and there's been other soccer teams in St. Louis. So there's been like groups of people who go to soccer games and there's a couple fan groups that have been established for a while now, because we've also known we were getting an MLS team for multiple years at this point. So fan groups were getting together and creating these chants. Yeah. Well, I think they were going to other, like, I think they are adapting stuff for this, uh, you don't ever just get together with the boys and just sing some, <laughs> <laughs> sing, do some chants. Uh, um, no, no. So, but the team embraced it because they have a, the team has a really, really well made app that gives you a ton of information about the team, and on it, it had links to the YouTube videos that these fan groups had made where they were like showing people what the chants were going to be. So you didn't get it huh. going into the stadium or anything like that. But, you know, a lot of people for for home opener are, are, are the types of people who were doing the research before. So there's like the St. Louisans, I think, and Fleur du Bois okay. uh, was another one. So they had like done these chants. But also they had like an entire section, this supporter group had an entire section booked out. And I think mostly what, really was happening is they have like a hundred people doing it and then everyone just wants to do it. So it spreads pretty quickly. You know, you, they're all like three second, you know, chance. So you can, you can learn them really well. And some of them incredibly simple. I mean, if you're a fan of St. Louis, like this was the best place to be because literally there for like a lot of the night, it was just the, you know, 20 something thousand people just going S T L S T L, you know, stuff like that. So, uh yeah it was a lot of fun i I, molly and i are gonna go to a game later this year i think and uh try to try to get into it um i i i think a real test for me is i'm gonna try to watch a game on tv uh and see if i still enjoy it because obviously like a like i can get into any sort of live event you know it's easy to uh, uh, just, yeah, I'll, I'll yell with anyone. And I was definitely trying to embrace the, um, the, you know, insanity of it all. Um, but we'll see after I actually watch a game on TV. Um, so yeah, that was, that was my first ever soccer game. And I'm glad that crikey, I uh, yeah. the new it, stadium it sounds like yeah. you yeah. really kick the ball around with the boys in oh, the square. Yeah. I mean the rectangle. What a ludicrous display. Um, what was the score? The news, three to one good guys. Wow. One of my favorite parts of the whole thing. The the very first game ever at City Park. You know, huge night. So the team's uh, called City. It's called City Park. I don't get the naming convention. I think it's kind of in tradition of other teams and their naming conventions. I, I think... Uh, is it, isn't that like isn't that a thing in the Premier Leagues and the in the Boy, European I don't soccer know. leagues? I don't, I don't know. know either. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I don't. Just I think name that it after just, an animal, though, like everyone else. All the teams are are this style of naming. There's not a lot of like bird names and stuff. I know we would all prefer it to be bird names. Yeah, then we could talk yeah. about it. It'd be relevant. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Anyways, none, none of this is relevant. Anyway, my favorite part is that the first ever goal scored at City Park was the other team scoring on themselves, <laughs> which I didn't I didn't realize like ever would happen in professional soccer. And it was sort of a series of, you know, ricochets and mistakes. But still, the uh, the first ever goal was an own goal, they call it. So I, uh, a series I of ricochets this. and mistakes sounds like the game of soccer explained in a sentence. Yeah, I mean, it really like for someone who doesn't know at all what's happening on the field, <laughs> it is chaos. It is chaos. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that for me lended itself to the sort of the whole environment. You know, is yeah. just like people screaming the whole time. Uh, the entire first half of the game, everybody was on their feet. It's the only sporting event I've ever been to, also where everyone was on their feet the entire time. Yeah. Uh, which was cool. That that sounds like a detracting factor to me, but yeah, I, I get <laughs> the excitement. But uh yeah. gotta rest these tootsies over here. Yeah. Well, I know you normally bring your ice bath to every game you go to, <laughs> and I'm a I'm a freak for the cold plunge. They're in now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well, so 
I uh, thank you for indulging me as I talk about the STL city. Yeah, it felt quite indulgent, but yeah, we we, <laughs> we did it. Uh, we'll find a segment for you to hate on some stuff later. I'm sure there'll be there'll be opportunity there. Absolutely. I uh, for our listeners at home, I'm doing this recording in a different environment than normal, and my uh, daughter <laughs> is in the room. I'm going to try to edit it as best I can, but it's been. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it all out of there. She's so. being very cute. If, yeah, Hopefully, if, you, yeah. if you can't handle this then that, you know, we're, we're whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's talk about the Cardinals. Uh, rather, let's talk about a very specific Cardinal uh, and a future maybe, Cardinal and a future Cardinal. That's right. Maybe the hottest off season of all time. First, the stat cast numbers bring yeah. him to the forefront of the news. Now, uh, he's he's entered the global stage uh, with uh, his the the burgeoning friendship of uh, a Japanese player Lars Newtbar and Shohei Otani. Uh, how fun has this been? Yeah, it's a uh, two samurais having a, a, a blossoming friendship, and I I think like. I've been thinking about this a lot. Like I think the world has, the baseball world is following this because first off, it's adorable. Um, but it makes me think Lars is must just be the most fun teammate of all time. Like yeah. we've heard the stories about him and Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt and the rest of the team and how much the team like kind of rallies around him. And he's like, he's like a pseudo leader. He's like a cultural leader of the team. Maybe not right. so much on the field. Um, and then of course, he goes over to Japan. He joins the Samurai team, um, which is a, a very fun WBC team um, that I think is going to go a pretty far away, uh, a long way in this tournament. And uh, my so my guess is it's kind of two factor. It's it's they both play in the MLB. So Shohei and Lars have that in common. Um, and I'm guessing Shohei speaks the best English on the I, Japanese I Samurai that team. Might be the case too. <laughs> and yeah. the, I know Lars speaks very little Japanese. I know his mom would speak to him in Japanese when he was growing up, but he was, uh, you know, mostly speaks He's, English. Yeah, he uh, said it was when she would yell at him. He would, yeah. she would do it in Japanese. So I'm sure he didn't really so I, pick up a ton of it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure it's kind of like multi-factor, like I said, in the sense that it's he's the only one they can really talk to. Also, I bet Lars is a blast, um, and Shohei yeah. is. You know, he he comes off as serious all the time, but it seems like in this, you know, he's back home playing for his team, wearing his colors. It seems like maybe he's having a little more fun with it, too. Um, and also, that being said, this has all been in like exhibition games. We'll see when the real tournament starts for Japan, yeah. if uh, they're still laughing and goofing around. But uh, how about Shohei had hit a couple of homers against uh, a in an exhibition game and it starts doing the pepper grinder coming around he's, third? Clearly. Yeah. He is, uh, I, you know, maybe Lars handed him a copy of the Cardinal Way. Maybe they're talking about what Ali Marmol is like, what the neighborhood in St. Louis is like. You know, one thing leads to another. That's how I see it. I, you know, I'm, so I, I think Lars is. I think Lars is being himself, and I also think he's being an ambassador for the St. Louis Cardinals. And you know, obviously, there is one free agent that matters next year, and that's for Soap <laughs> Shohei. And man. I don't think it's going to happen, but that'd be insane. No, of course not. It's no, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and this is fun and we're all loving it. But I think there is a negative percent chance that uh, well, Otani is a Cardinal. I'll say this though. It is extremely unlikely that Shohei Otani becomes a Cardinal. That being said, he has proven in the past that he does not make decisions based solely on money. Um, Cause obviously mm -hmm. he left the MVP uh, prematurely, not prematurely, but prematurely to, uh, to basically, uh, so he could become like a, a normal rookie contract and not get super duper paid. Like he would have likely have been, he chose the angels, which is a small market or they're not a small market team, but they're kind of in the shadow of the Dodgers and all the other California teams. Like he could have chosen any other team. Um, if he played for St. Louis, he could have a quiet little life. He could have a shot at the playoffs. He would fill a huge need. It, it isn't insane to me to think that that being said, like I honestly, I think it's impossible to predict where, where and what Shohei is thinking because he has kind of proven, I think that he'll, he, he won't just yeah. go with conventional wisdom. Does that make I sense? 
it it does um i do know people were pretty shocked when he selected the angels as well um and i think they part of the bargaining was like hey we have mike trout he's the best player in baseball we'll put you with him and you know look at what we could do and great idea uh, it turns out you need 24 other good players as well so yeah. it didn't really work out um and you know you could argue that mo has a really compelling argument to say let's put you with goldschmidt arenado and uh maybe you know maybe jordan walker lars uh, and and law and your new best friend uh yeah. lars will get you a bunk together um so yeah i mean you know You've convinced me, Ben, it would be great for Shohei Otani to be a St. Louis Cardinal, but uh, I just well, don't see them. The, the Diwala, you know, we're going to have a, we're going to need a couple more Arby's to open before I think he could, uh, to pay for this. Yeah. I, I just want like 400 million plus. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. and it should be, it honestly should yeah. probably be more than that. It should probably be yeah. five or 600 million. Uh, Agreed. you know, when you talk about not only like the on field value that he brings, but also like the media attention, the, uh, all the advertisers. I mean, he is, he's the, one of the biggest stars in sports right now, yeah. period. I um, mean, there's a legitimate and, argument to be made that he's the best baseball player of all time. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think I would yeah. argue against that very aggressively. I know, it's insane. Yeah. But I think like probably, you know, if you like Vegas odds, or if you were to put money on it, it's like Mets Dodgers, right. Or, or one, a one B. And then the rest of the league is kind of just out there. And I think teams, that are have shown an ability to be competitive year in and year out are in like pool B and then everyone else is in pool C. And so all I'm really saying is like it wouldn't be the or I wouldn't be totally shocked if Shohei doesn't go where the most money is. Yeah. Um now that being said, there's still like half, you know, I don't know, 10 other teams that would make sense. And, you know, there's an argument for the Mariners. There's there's an mar- argument for a bunch of other teams. Yeah. Um you know, the Cubs are in a very financially flexible position going into next offseason, which uh, is Don't say that. something that I think Cardinals fans should you you know, shut, be aware of. You shut your, you <laughs> shut your damn mouth. Um, so, you know, there are th- right. there are other options for him out there. But I, I do think it's not unreasonable to consider that it might be out there as a possibility. <laughs> All right. Well, as the as we progress through the season and head towards the off season, we may consider the possibility that it might maybe be in the realm of possibilities. Yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah. let's not close the door. You've convinced me. Let's. Not, I said negative percent yeah. chance. I'll I'll bump it up to one percent chance. Yeah. Uh, that he sides with the Cardinals. Uh, I I think it's like five percent, five to six percent, and okay. I think. We don't need to talk about it now because it's literally going to be the biggest story in baseball over the next six months. But yeah. um, I'm just saying it's it's not impossible. And Lars is doing the work. That's where it starts. I saw someone on Twitter say Pujols accepted the uh, personal services contract with the Angels. Uh, he like has agreed to honor it so he could also be an ambassador for the Cardinals for uh, Shohei. So, uh, you know, we've got that angle as well. I mean, I, I know I'm a, a Homer and a Cardinals fan and everything like what? that, but I, I bet there is a percentage of Shohei that looks at what Pujols did last year and the accolades and the celebrations and the Vada boys and all that stuff. And is like, oh, that, that didn't look well, too terrible. I mean, look no further than the than the actual outcome we saw of Nolan Arenado saying this is the place I want to be. You know, yeah. I don't need to like he he took a pay cut. Um an absolutely unnecessary pay cut to just stick with the contract that he already had to stay with the Cardinals. So, you know, it's out there. Like that's, that's been a part of the Cardinal sort of value for a while, but um, yeah. So I guess we'll see, but let's talk about uh, people who are actual Cardinals now. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's talk about uh, spring training. We we're like, we're, we're in it now. We got a, full week of games we couldn't watch any of them but we've got like a full week of games to talk about box um, scores to stare at yeah we got box scores to stare at we've got the, those highlights active. that they give you on the mlb app that's like kind of behind the batter's box at a weird yeah. angle but there's no camera work and you can it's sort on, of hear what's going on the phone on someone's phone yeah. yeah uh but hey you know what it's baseball it's real baseball and so let's talk about it uh yeah what are some of your takeaways now from this last week? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, we've talked about the concerns um, around Wayno and his position in the starting rotation and how um, 
Um, he's steady as a rock, right? He he's been the guy. Father time is undefeated, so on and so forth. Little worried about what he's going to bring this year because you, I think you just have to be when you have a player who's this old with the <laughs> um, responsibility that he has in his spot in the rotation. <laughs> Uh, Wayno makes his first start. His fastball was sitting around 85, which was a, a little worrisome. Um, after the game, Katie Wu uh, reported that there were some back spasms going on, not fully healthy. Uh, my guess is that that is something, you know, just kind of spring training, getting the body ready, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, the fact that you see Wayno's fastball sitting around 85, which is about five, six miles less than you would expect it to be, um, it is a little worrisome. Um, now that being said, at the same time, Wayno has been named the starter for team USA on the game that's happening right. this Saturday, uh, on the 11th. So, you know, we'll, I think we'll find out really quickly and on a big stage, uh, how Wayno's feeling. The pitchers are going to be limited to 65 pitches in the first round. My guess is he's got 65 pitches, uh, in his bag. If he's, um, feeling healthy, like he'll, he'll be able to go that distance. And obviously it just depends on like how economical he can be on an inning per inning basis to see how long he goes. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, I'm not hitting the panic button, but it's not my favorite news to be reported out of spring training yet, I guess is where I'm landing on this. Yeah. We left 2022 with a really rough outing, several outings in a row from Wayno, And then we got the really candid response from him breaking down his delivery. What was the problem? Here's part of why I'm coming back is because I've, I've solved that problem and I want to show everyone that I can go out on a high note. And then we come into spring and it, you know, we're getting a li- little taste of like, maybe not everything is exactly right. Uh, Obviously not the storyline you want after your first start in spring, but also it is your first start in spring. So yeah, I think you, like you said, we actually have a really unique opportunity here to get roughly 65 pitches of Wayno, assumedly actually really trying to win against uh, a, another, you know, another professional baseball team. Uh, another really one. Won. So yeah. So it'll be interesting. I mean, it's, it's Wayno like, you know, part of his whole thing has always been adapting and figuring it out. So if his fastball velocity really is down, uh, you know, it's not ideal. Faster is better, but he's become more of a tricker trickster righty now than anything. So like maybe he makes it work with a mid high eighties instead of, uh, you know, 90 or so, but still every, every mile per hour that ticks down the, the easier it is to get clobbered. So yeah, uh, not ideal. It, and I think you are right, though. Like, I, I do think, can Wayno make it work with 85 miles per hour? Probably. Does that put him, like, more around, like, the mid-4 ERA rather than the mid-3 ERAs? Probably. Um, and good news for Wayno is he's going up against Great Britain in the WBC on Saturday. <laughs> so at least... Or... I know it's like, he's got... <laughs> God... Uh, sorry to our sorry. UK listeners. Yeah. <laughs> I know we, we know we have some and, uh, we, you know, so shout out to our UK listeners. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, I except know... for that we're going to crush them on Saturday. Oh, oh, on that day, it's going down to the bird's court. I can tell you that right now. I'm going to be <laughs> spitting hot fire. I, the only, and I have to look at the roster off the top of my head. The only major league baseball player I can think of that's on that team is Harry Ford. Who's the big, strong lefty who hits bombs. Um, so I think it's going to be a fairly easy assignment for Wayno. but like you said, it's going to be super telling. I think it's more going to be like, I'm going to be watching that game. Oh, if the USA doesn't beat great Britain, that's, that's going to be sad. So and I'm going to be watching that game more from Wayno's uh, point of view and, and kind of like another spring training start, because hopefully it is that easy breezy for him. But we shall see. It's going to be another revolutionary war here, buddy. Br- Great Britain's going down. <laughs> Man. You're warming up for that one, and I thought it was going to be better than that, but you, I you tried. I was, too. I, yeah, <laughs> I did. I I, sometimes I start a joke before I know where it's going and I just yeah. get sad about it halfway through too. So. <laughs> That's that is this podcast. <laughs> Lot, uh, lots of well, so, so we've uh, started on a, like a lower note uh, as far as pitching yeah. goes with Wainwright, but I'd say 
big picture though overall like it's been more positive than than sour with some really interesting positive things coming early yeah I, I mean i think all in all like you said it, it is pretty much good across the board obviously we're worried about way now um but we we talked about Leahy uh last week how impressive he's been he's continued that um, this week we also saw Andre Pallante come out of the bullpen throwing straight gas 98 in one of his, uh, if I think it was his first, if, if one of his first appearances yeah. in spring. And to me, it makes all the sense in the world. You got 98 in that curveball, and he, you know, works on his location, a bullpen arm, uh, or a bullpen roster spot for Andre Pallante, uh, makes all of the sense. Um, and him mm-hmm. looking really really good this early in spring is a huge sign for the cardinals and like i i we talked about uh when we were going over the fan graphs uh zips article how good this bullpen could be if palante can be the guy that comes in five six um seven even maybe if he's being really successful that makes this bullpen i i mean really one of the best in yeah. baseball well and it would help potentially stave off one of the big problems that uh, sort of cascaded last year, which is when the starting rotation started to falter, uh, it really exposed the middle part of the bullpen and the Cardinals were no longer able to win those tight games that were still competitive in the fifth, sixth and seventh inning uh, because they were losing it going to Verhagen and those t- sorts of guys in the middle yeah. of the, of the bullpen. And it just, turned a two, uh, two game or a two, one game all of a sudden into down by five or, or whatever. And it is just kind of throwing away games that would have been more competitive with a good bullpen. And the Cardinals were able to solve that mostly by just getting a better rotation by getting uh, Montgomery and Quintana. Um, but it could have also been solved by having just an effective, yeah. uh, effective deep bullpen you know, sort of like the Royals did uh, way back and the Indi- uh, and the Guardians did way back, you know, by um, just shortening the length that their starters need to go. So, yep. uh, yeah, a healthy or a, a, an incredibly effective Palante who could go multiple innings, you know, pair him with Hicks. Yeah. And suddenly you've got two guys that can give you a couple innings in a game that should be at a at a high quality run that into uh, Gallegos and Helsley. And, you know, that's a really good recipe, even if your starter doesn't go more than four or five. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be really curious to see what Palante's strikeout numbers look like, uh, because I think that would probably be the one knock on him last year is that he was getting weak contact, but he wasn't getting swing and misses. And when you see somebody with the stuff that he has, it almost like reminds me of Joe Kelly. It's like when you're throwing a 98 mile an hour, uh, fastball with movement on it. You should probably be getting a few more strikeouts. So see yeah. what happens there. It's always interesting to me when these guys have these this high heat and just don't strike yeah. anyone out. Maybe the biggest game this week, at least for things that I was you know really looking for early in this off season, uh, was the game that had Flaherty and and Stephen Matz go back to back. And I don't know, man. Like could you have asked for better than what we got from that game? Like I'm trying to be reserved here. I I've had my heart broken, you know, four years in a row, basically, or three years in a row with, with Flaherty and, and one year with Matt's. So, uh, try not to get too overexcited about this, but, uh, I mean, that was about as good as you could ask for. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, Flaherty comes in the game, he struggles a little bit, gives up a bomb and then basically goes into Terminator mode and starts striking everybody out. And the slider was there. Uh, the fastball was really working. I think what's cool about Flaherty when he's looking good is he can throw that fastball 93, 94 and people are swinging at it. Like it's a hundred. Um, and he had that working, which was impressive. Um, and then with Matt's, you know, like the thing with Steven Matt's is let's not forget when he, he had the second half with the blue Jays before the Cardinals picked him up and he found something and he changed the way and he had a really solid second half. He came over here. Obviously he, you know, it it was a weird off season. Like we've talked about 17 times. Um, he came over, kind of got going, got the injury, came back, looked really good, had that weird injury. Um, you know, I, we praised the math signing last year. I still think it's a good signing, especially at yep. that dollar amount. Like when, you know, we were talking about like the types of deals that were going to Matt's level pitchers. Matt's probably would have made double 
um, if not more in the, if he was a free agent this off season rather than the one previous. Um, but I do think like there, there is a, or, or I guess I, I think Cardinals fans should look at both of these pitchers to be decently effective for like 140 innings this year. And I think if they eclipse those numbers, then we should be really, really excited. But I think there is no reason, um, Matt's is healthy. He's, you know, he had a kind of a free, a normal injury and then a freak injury after that. He's looked really good already. Obviously he is super motivated. That came through in the start that we saw. Um, and yeah, getting four K's in three innings that quickly. Um, I don't know. I, my expectations are high for Steven Matz this year. I think, yeah. uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he excels. That being said, I still don't think we're going to get a full 30 plus starts from him. I think he is just no. kind of what he is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if you remember in the little bit, we did see him when he came back last year, but before the freak injury, uh, he looked great. So yeah. I, I too am very excited about Matt's and, you know, the whole time we were talking about adding a starting pitcher, uh, that has been the equation that's been troubling and you can understand why the Cardinals didn't necessarily go out and add someone. Cause it basically kicks Steven Matz out of the rotation and we like Steven Matt. So I am excited to see him get a, a, a real shot at having a full season. Um, and I think for him, like you said, a full season is yeah. 140, 150 innings. You can do that without getting hurt. It's just the team yeah. limiting how deep you go into games. Same for Flaherty, like 140, 150 projection does not mean we're predicting them to get hurt. It means we're predicting the Cardinals to uh, not let them go deep as much as they might want to. And, and there's value in that other, yeah. you know, other teams are managing their pitchers this way and they're being highly successful. Like you go look at the, uh, the Rays starting rotation, and how many innings they rack up. And I think it makes sense, you know, get squeeze as much juice as you can out of Jack Flaherty without getting him injured. That, that should be the Cardinals main, main focus for how to use him this yeah. year. Um, cause like, you know, if you get, I, we don't think, or I don't think, uh, Flaherty is going to give us another 2019, but if he can give us somewhere in between there for, you know, two thirds of a year, um, innings wise, then that's massively value. And that's exactly what the yeah. Cardinals need. Um, yep. And I don't know, it's all kind of lining up for Jack to come back this year. Uh, I, you know, obviously I don't want to get my hopes up too high. Uh, but with that performance, his motivation, the contract year, um, I think he wants to prove it. And, uh, I don't know. It it would be a really, really great story. It'd be a really great way for this season to go. Be really great if he has a good year. The Cardinals extend him, and that's how Wayno passes the baton down. Um, But you know, we'll see. Exactly what I was gonna say. I want to. I want to see a really good uh, March, April, May, and then a nice little extension. Give him some money. Give him some security, and then we have an ace locked up for the next few years at least. So yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about the offensive side of the ball where it's been even more exciting. Um, yeah. Now, we and the rest of the baseball world have been gushing about Jordan Walker at forever, and it just keeps continuing. And I and I I'm going to say I think we should let's try not to spend the next 20 minutes talking about how awesome Jordan Walker <laughs> is, because there's been other things going on, too. Yeah. But he's leading all of baseball in almost every single offensive category. He's doing absolutely everything that he and more than you could expect from from a guy his age and with all the 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 light on him right now. It, it's truly incredible. Will he make the opening day roster? I, there's so many factors in there that don't that are not even in his control. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun. But yeah. I, I I vote we talk about the other guys. Uh, yeah, because I, well, there's some other I, cool cool stuff happening. I, I want to nitpick Jordan Walker, although it's it's unfair because when you're hitting 400, um, walks don't really matter. Uh, but he has yet sure. to walk in this spring training, so I think I would not be surprised if the Cardinals use that to be like, "Hey, we need to work on his eye a little bit." I know he hit 400, yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. you know the, who, who the cares about is walks? Not sustainable. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah. yeah, you're right. Um, but man, yeah, he he's tearing it up. But yeah, to move on, um, I, I think a, a kind of a story that's going a little bit under the radar or is uh, maybe more impactful. Um, so obviously, Wilson Contreras is taking over catching, um, but he's not going to catch as many games as Yadier Molina used to. So that means the backup role, I, I think, is a, a relevant role on the Cardinals for the first time in 20 years. 
Uh, and Trace Pereira is getting rave reviews from the pitching staff. If you look at it, you know, he has pretty limited history uh, as far as big league experience, but he's been a plus defender. Uh, he's 28 years old. Um, like I said, the pitching staff is already praising him, his ability to call games, work with catchers, and he's a catch and throw guy. Um, and it's really kind of putting, or it's early, but it's feeling like the the supplanting, the the moving on from Andrew Kisner is a, is a little more likely uh, with with Trace Pereira kind of coming in and and like I said, you know, kind of putting his foot down and and being solid defensively. I think offensively, it's pretty much a one to one. They both can't really hit, but. <laughs> when you're talking about a backup catcher for my money, all you need is a guy that can call a game and, and, and catch and throw a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And ideally the lineup is good enough that we don't necessarily need, uh, you know, the catcher position to be an offensive force on an everyday basis. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I, I have, um, said even very recently that I think the Cardinals do need to move on from Kisner. Um, seems like a great guy, uh, but it seems like the most of my criticism has been the offensive approach has basically collapsed. And so, you know, knowing trace Barrera is not an offensive replacement either. I have a hard time really. It's like six to one, half a dozen to the other. Um, but it is nice to have a different, you know, different look, different, different approach in there, even if they're uh, not a significant difference between the two. Yeah. I think, I don't know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. maybe Pages, uh, Pages could uh, could leapfrog, although he might have been demoted already. Um, that being said, backup catcher. Hopefully it doesn't matter too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I just have this feeling that Andrew Kisner is on his way to being DFA'd um, and picked up by. Pirates. I was going to say the Reds because the Pirates, they have their char- all they oh, have is catching yeah. prospects. That, they've got so many catching prospects. Yeah. So, and, and they just hired, we'll talk, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, Pirates later, but they also signed uh, Party Boy himself. Um, what's <laughs> what, Austin Hedges? Right, right. Uh, yeah. Who, never mind. I take it back. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe the Reds. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's too bad for kids, but I think it makes sense. And and like I said, focus on somebody who does a good job back there. Um, moving on from the catching position, Nolan Gorman. Um, yes. You know, early reports, he's impressing uh, on, on both sides of the ball, especially with the advancements he's made in laying off the high fastball. And I think if you watch Nolan uh, play it all this spring, it is evident. We talked about it. He, he looks thinner stronger he looks quicker um his swing looks quicker the leg kick everything is just looking just looking more like a big leaguer now than he did last year which uh you know maybe is an obvious thing to say considering he is uh, a year older and, and has a year in the bigs behind him um but i think like it what nolan gorman can do to this offense left-handed power bat sometimes at second, sometimes at third, and maybe most of the time at DH, I don't think can be understated. If he starts to pop, and let's not forget, this was the highest prospect in the Cardinal system before Jordan Walker became, you know, mini Babe Ruth yeah. or, or, or mini John right. Carlo or whatever you want to call him. Um, like, there's still a lot in that prospect tank and a lot that Nolan Gorman can do and bring to the table. Yeah, we we so quickly move on to the next guy because, of course, that you know you want someone to dream on. And Gorman had a good but not particularly exciting uh, 2022. So it's easy to move past him and be like, give me Jordan Walker, give me Mason Wynn. Um, but yeah, the Nolan Gorman's having a great spring, and of all of the of these guys, is the most likely to be successful. It's really really hard to come up your rookie year and be successful in the major leagues it's really usually it takes a couple years so someone like gorman is the type of guy you actually really expect to take a huge step forward more so than someone who's 20 years old and never been in the league at all and i wonder like you get that first year you get that spring training where people are all talking about how you got to make the team and you know i'm sure you try to drown that out but i wonder if like being a little post hype in the Cardinal system helps somebody like that out. Like he, he was told to go in the off season to work on a couple of things. He's coming in Mason, Wynn and Nolan and uh, Jordan Walker are soaking up all the headlines. I wonder if that makes it easier for a guy to kind of come in and just, you know, do the job and, and take good yeah. at bats and hit the 
hell out of the ball when he has the opportunity to just going around curing people of their gourmania, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's doing God's work out there. Lan- lancing the boils. Oh God. I don't think we talked about it being a boil ridden disease. I'm pretty sure I've said that many times <laughs> on okay. account of all of my boils. I oh I yes, would, yes, 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 yes. You do be... look hideous. Uh, well, they, they were cured last year. So, um, I don't know what you're talking about now. The, uh, is it the flaps? <laughs> I did. I do have some flaps left over. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about Gorman. I, uh, how about Dylan Carlson? You know, he's yeah. another guy that people are trying to write off, trying to throw him down, say, Walker, you're the new starting outfielder. Carlson, get out of here. And he says, no, how about I hit a couple tanks? absolute yeah. bombs from the left side of the plate. How about I do that? Yeah, it's, you know, I think we talked about it. That's what he needed to work on. He was kind of quickly becoming a platoon player and he was on that short side of the platoon, you know, like obviously there are more right-handed pitchers in baseball than there are left-handed. Um, and he had a career 686 OPS off of left or right-handed pitching. Now him coming in and hitting, I think the the home run he hit the other day was 109 off the bat. He looks big. He looks strong. He looks like he's connecting with the ball well. I mean, it's kind of the same story for Gorman, except for a, a year in advance. Like he was also the top prospect in the Cardinals system. Like yeah. that, that, I don't know if I really thought about the Cardinals like that, but if you kind of like Jack Flaherty, Jordan Walker, Mason, Mason Wynn in the future. Nolan Gorman and Dylan Carlson, you're talking about a lot of high end talent. And if those guys can all click with the other players around them that, you know, have been in the league a little bit longer, the team yeah. starts looking really successful. And really the one knock on Dylan is right-handed pitching. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, and again, this is the normal way that players evolve, right? Like, we're all so jaded by your Julio Rodriguez's and, and guys like that. It's normally year two, three, four, five, or players really start to put it together, become these, um, you know, successful long-term big leaguers. And, and Carlson had multiple injuries last year, including to his wrist, which is, you know, crucial for, uh, for an offensive player. So, um, saying don't write him off yet and it's it's a lot of this stuff carlson hitting well gorman hitting well that is probably ultimately going to result in walker starting at uh triple a even if he continues to hit 400 um but the other guy that i want to talk about before we get out of here i just want to say real quick you know all these guys have been impressive some expectedly so some unexpectedly so but the one that's really stood out to me actually above everyone has been mason Wynn. yeah it's kind of reminding me of Brendan Donovan last year in a different way, but similar to how it's like just this guy with more energy than anyone else doing everything that he, uh, everything that he touches, he's doing really, really well. Um, he's all over the place, hitting the ball hard, playing incredible defense. He's been a ton of fun to watch. And to my eye, he looks as ready for the big leagues as anyone else in this, in this conversation. (laughs) And there is the only thing that puts him below Paul DeYoung on the, uh, on the depth chart is that he's not on the 40 man. And Paul DeYoung is owed like whatever millions and millions of dollars, because it's clear he, at the very least, he'd be a above average, if not uh, like near elite, a defensive shortstop right now. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think watch, watching him in this limited time, I th- I could sit here right now and say he's the best defensive shortstop for the big league club. It's the consistency. Can he do it? Like that's what Tommy Edmond brings, right? Is, is he's madly consistent. He catches every ball. He doesn't really make mistakes is when that guy yet, probably not just because of his age. And I'm sure if you watch him day to day, he likes to show off that power arm and that doesn't always go perfectly. Although it seems to go yeah. perfectly mostly. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think, uh, first off, yeah, I think you're a hundred percent right. Um, I think that his path to playing time is clearer than other players, especially with Tommy being a a gold glove winning second baseman and a, and a decent outfielder as well. Um, 
you know, we, we've talked about several times, Tommy's best position for the team is probably utility role just because he doesn't have the best arm um, on the team might make win a little bit of a better pick over him in the long yeah. run for shortstop. Um, but I think the offense is what's been most intriguing to me. Like, obviously the glove is there. The arm is there. It's wow. Uh, when you watch him, but him being able to slap the ball kind of, you know, give what they or take what they give you that kind of approach, not getting too big, um, and stealing bases has been a super fun thing to watch. And I did not expect to see the, you know, uh, he's pulling his line drives, but he's also dumping his singles over the second baseman's head and in front of the right fielder and center fielder. Uh, his approach is much more mature than I had expected coming into spring. Yeah. And that is, I mean, when you have all the tools in the world, um, you're just a physically gifted human. And then you also have a mature approach at the box. Like, wow. Yeah. Maybe he won't be in the minors much Man. longer. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. And even Ali Marmala said like, he's way more advanced than we were expecting him to be. He's more impressive than we were expecting to be. He's saying all the things and you know, man, that make like, it's, I know it's going to happen sooner or later, but when him and Walker are playing together on the big league club, that is just going to be a blast. Cause we know they're buddies. Yeah. They, we know, yeah. you know, they got big personalities. It's going to be very like, we'll have at some point there's going to be a, a version of the Cardinals where we got Matthew Liberator and Nolan Gorman being buddy, buddy in the clubhouse. And then you got these two guys coming up kind of the best friends gang, uh, coming through. And then of course you got Nolan and uh, Goldie. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's an easy team to root for right now. It really is. It really is. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the the old adage of spring training doesn't really predict future results is, of course, true. But my take on that is always that, OK, that may be true, but it'll, I'll, I will always prefer the more fun, uh, exciting outcome in spring training, even if it's not necessarily predictive. Uh, this has been a really fun spring training to start and I'm looking forward to it continuing. And with the world baseball classic, giving all these dudes basically as many at bats as they need or as they want, we're really going to get a look at these guys and, uh, it'll be interesting. I think that Mo and co are going to have some tough decisions, uh, when it gets down to cutting this roster to, uh, to the opening day lineup. So, yeah. Yeah. And I wonder like, yeah. Is is someone's performance going to force a trade? Um, it feels it, like it. Well, Brendan Donovan, another tank today. He crushed yeah. another one. Like he's got more home runs in the last week than he almost did in the entire season. Again, yeah. spring training, I know, but still, like and, and those well, things start to tell a new story. Not not to tangent too much, but it's it's like not only does he have more home runs in a short amount of time, but they're freaking bombs. Like yeah, these are yeah. not cheapies he, at all. Yeah. The one he hit today, we're recording on a Wednesday. He knew it off the bat. Everyone knew it off the bat. I don't think any of Brendan Donovan's it, home runs last year we knew off the bat. It, it, it went it over like, the bleachers today. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. It, yeah, it I seems think... like the, the power increase is real. Okay, will it transition to Major League in-game? I don't know, but he definitely, his, 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 his he's adjusted his approach to add more launch angle, and it's hey, showing. He, he went to Marucci. Um, yeah. and, and what I'm kind of, I'd be curious to is hear an interview with him, but obviously he's got a great eye and a patient approach. It seems like he is kind of picking earlier in the count to be a little more aggressive. Um, and you know, a guy that had a, a 400 OBP last year, if he cuts that down by a little percent, but then increases his slugging by a hundred points or so, like you'll take it all day. Also, yeah. that's like an all-star, like we're talking about an yeah, all-star oh, yeah. all player when he, he starts did. putting all that together. It's a totally new profile and it one is. that is significantly more valuable on to, on an already valuable profile. Yeah. He doesn't need to add that much power to suddenly become like a cornerstone of this team. It's yeah. pretty wild. So, all right. Um, well, we've got more to talk about. We always do. Um, but before we do that, I want to remind everybody, that the show is supported on Patreon. Patreon.com slash talking about birds. If you enjoy the show, want to sell, want to support us and the work that goes into bringing this to you every single week, like me recording with my child in the room, uh, <laughs> consider going to Patreon.com slash talking about birds and supporting us. Uh, we have a bunch of different tiers, interesting, different things you get. 
but anybody who supports us at even the base level gets access to our private discord. It's the bird scored. We're firing up our fantasy league right now. We're going to be watching games together. We got all sorts of fun stuff we're going to be doing in there this summer. Shout out to our current members of the bird scored. Uh, check it out. Uh, if you uh, can't do that, but still want to support the show, consider leaving us a, a review on your favorite podcast platform. It really does help. And before I turn it over to Ben, I want to plug the fact that we will be on our friend C70's show. Meet me at Musual. Uh, we are recording this week. It'll come out, I believe, this week also. So check that out. It's a great show. He has a ton of uh, great guests on it, and we're happy to be a part of it. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, ben, where can people find us online otherwise? Yeah, yeah all the socials and whatnot. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter at Talk About Birds. On Instagram, we are talking about birds. Uh, we are also TikTokers now. Follow us on TikTok. We post little videos, behind the scenes stuff. Um, I don't know. We're we're figuring it out. Um, but hit us up there. We're we're trying uh, to be cool. Um, you can also <laughs> email us directly. Questions, comments, concerns, uh, baseball recommendations. Are you going to the the park? We have food recommendations for you. Where should you sit? Baseball starting. Let's talk. Let's talk. I don't know. I don't really have anything else Let's to talk. add to that. But email us at talk about birds at gmail.com. Um, we want to hear from you. Tell us if we're doing anything uh, terrible and uh, <laughs> we'll ignore it and keep pushing forward. <laughs> yep. Started with, hey, Ben, here are the things that you're doing terrible. <laughs> I I know. I, or, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It'll look like my emails that I send to you <laughs> that start with, hey, Ben, here are the things that you're doing terrible. Uh, Nate does it after every record. It's, it's horribly... <laughs> It Who just takes like the wind notes? out of my sails. <laughs> Everyone wants notes. Yeah. All right. We could all stand to improve. Thanks, pal. So last week we kicked off a new segment where we are uh, going through spring training and breaking down the other teams in the NL Central. We're going from worst to first. And so last week we did the Reds. And now we're going, we're taking a huge step. We're just a, <laughs> a monumental leap in the standings up to the Pittsburgh Pirates. And though we laugh, uh, and obviously the Pirates are not expected to be pretty good this year or good at all. But you know what? At least they did some things this offseason, right? Like they've they added a few guys there. There's... You know, there's some momentum maybe behind the Pirates, uh, if I'm being kind. They've got a few interesting pieces. Before we yeah. get into the specifics, like what's your broad strokes take on the Pirates? Uh, yes, I agree. I do think this is one of the better off seasons that they've had in recent memory. Um, mostly because they've been like unbelievably inactive. Like the Cardinals were inactive, but, you know, there's there's. It's a good team that are close to the big leagues, yeah. right? You have, um, you know, players that have been there for a while sticking around. Uh, you have stalwarts at positions and you can't really say that for the pirates and the pirates also had some bad luck last year. Like you would think when you're how, you know, key Brian Hayes is getting used to the league. You call up Uber prospect freak show O'Neill Cruz. You have Brian Reynolds in the outfield. Um, and some young pitchers, you think that they would take a step forward, but they just didn't. Um, so I will applaud them for augmenting their roster in a positive way for what feels like the first time in a long time. <laughs> but that is, yeah. I think, the nicest way I could talk about what Sherrington and, and Nutting are allowing to happen over there. Yeah, it's also their 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 style of improvement is basically like, they're hiring out of the retirement home of the rest of baseball. You know, I think the average age of these signings is probably like 37 <laughs> when you throw in, uh, well, when you throw in Rich Hill, <laughs> I was going to say Rich Hill, definitely he being the oldest player in baseball, definitely trends that towards the higher end for sure. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, we are a Dick mountain pro podcast. So we, we appreciate that he is allowed to keep pitching. Um, I, I hope he keeps coming back year after year. Um, it took me too long on Dick Mountain. Like, oh come what, on! Don't what is he saying? Any time on baseball internet? Yeah, I forgot. I forgot it's been a while. <laughs> Rich Hill. All right. Yeah. So let's start with uh, who did the Pirates lose uh, yeah. from their team? 
And it's funny, you know, I have this labeled as notable losses, and I don't think that that is true for any of these names. Just but not losses. I'll just hit them. Uh, Roberto Perez, who I actually think is underrated. He is a ace defensive catcher. He's got a little bit of pop. Didn't have a great year last year. Um, but like he can, he can catch every day. He's, he's a very good defender. Um, I, I like him. Um, obviously the pirates don't like him. Yeah. Uh, so moved on from him, uh, Roberto Perez, Jake Marisnik. Uh, we all know him defensive specialist center fielder, mm-hmm. uh, Ben Gamble, who had actually kind of a nice year in parts yeah. last year. He found a little bit of power. Um, and Yoshi, uh, Tsutsugo, um, who was kind of their first base kind of DH and kind of, a guy that kind of just hasn't really clicked. He he was signed by the Rays and then kind of hit with the Pirates, but yeah, it's, I, he honestly I don't even know where he is right now. He might be back in Nippon uh, professional baseball. I don't know if he's still stateside. Great first name. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> um, and yes, I don't think there's really much else flavor to add to that. Right? Those no. those are the guys. They're gone. Uh, two outfielders, a catcher, and a hitter. Um, the additions there, this is, I think this is where you can applaud them a little bit. Cause at least the names are interesting. Like we said, Rich Hill, who is likely to be their second or third starter That's rough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a 42 year old. He's the oldest pitcher in base or uh, player in baseball. Um, but was effective enough to get a job. Uh, so yeah. good for him. Well, um, it wasn't, I think two years in a row now. Cardinal fans, we've been like, all right, just fine. Just go trade for Rich Hill. Like yeah. We've kind of expected that to be who we were getting at the midseason. So, uh, you know, he's effective enough for us all to be like, uh, just bring Rich Hill and it'll be fine. And, and I'll tell you, every single name on this list of additions, except for one, I would say I probably will add, like the Pirates probably sign these guys to move at midseason uh, if they do something yeah. special. Um, so it's, it's, I I know I'm kind of undercutting my compliment, but at least they're doing something, uh, Rich Hill. Uh, they also signed uh first base DH Carlos Santana, who is an effective big leaguer still kind of, yeah, Um, he should give them, uh, what professional at bats. He can walk and hit a bomb every once in a while. Yeah. Um, Vince Velasquez starting pitcher, uh, Harlan Garcia. I had to look up who that was because I couldn't remember. Uh, he is a relief pitcher. Austin Hedges. Uh, you know, they swap out Roberto Perez for Austin yep. Hedges. That's, you know, I think Austin Hedges is praised for his ability to call a game, but, you know, <laughs> that's about it. I think right. he hit like, uh, he hit su- sub 200 last year, if I remember correctly. Um, and then a couple exciting, si- or more exciting signings. G Man Choi. Uh, was probably their best offseason move uh, for my uh, money. They traded to get him from the Rays. He's a big left-handed hitting first baseman, fairly solid defender. It's a big man that can do the splits, so I, I'm a fan, you know, just <laughs> automatically. <laughs> That's always impressive. You it once is. spent like a full year uh, training to do, a, to do the splits to win a bet. I How did. do you feel about that now in, in hindsight? Hey, I can say that I've done the splits. I know your ass has never done that. So how about yeah, that? I, yeah, I will. Um, I think you'd have to it'd result in my legs being popped out like old crash test dummies uh, <laughs> in order for me to be able to do the splits. Yeah. So uh, maybe watch your mouth when you're talking to me. I feel like I brought that positively. Oh, OK. <laughs> I did not. I did not feel like it did not come off like that. Uh just, I, I guess I'm just used to being defensive when talking to you. Hey, piece um, of shit! You did a, sh- you did some <laughs> shitty splits before, right? <laughs> you dumbass. Uh, there. Thanks, pal. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that that felt more natural, at least. Yeah. Um, and uh, most excitingly, they brought back the 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 guy, the goat, the pirate, Andrew McCutcheon. Yeah, is back with the Pirates. I love the signing. Um curious to see i hope this isn't his last year mccutcheon isn't even that old yet he still walks his sprint yeah. speed is underrated um i'd like him to capture a little bit of lightning i'd like to see him i think it'd be a really fun for baseball to see andrew mccutcheon kind of usher in a more competitive version of the pirates if you know bob nutting is is willing to you know open up the the uh, pocketbook a little bit more which may not be likely but it's fun to see McCutcheon back. Um, big fan. Uh, yeah. I, he's one of my favorite non-Cardinals players of my lifetime. I, I just think he's great. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, the Cardinals got to experience this last year, bringing back a legacy player. Um, you know, he hasn't indicated that he's retired or anything like Ben said. He's got some, he, he's what, 35? So I think, I think conceivably he's 35, he, yeah. he should have a handful of years left if he maintains production. But he's he's really struggled to do that. So it, it could be any year now that he retires. But yeah. it's fun that, it you know, he's back with the Pirates and hopefully he can, uh, like you said, you know, maybe be a part of a transition into a new phase of competitive pirates yeah. or at least get some good fan service before <laughs> yeah. he retires, which he'll, is he'll, frankly he'll the more tickets. likely outcome. Yeah, he, he will sell tickets. And also Kutch just looks good in the black and gold. Like it just it looks natural to me. Um, and, yeah. and it's it's fun to see that. Um, so those are the the ads and drops uh, for the pirates. A couple of storylines we already talked about, but O'Neill Cruz and Key Brian Hayes, um, super duper. Uh, Key Brian Hayes might be the best third baseman defensively in the league. He's just got to somehow wrestle that away from Nolan Arenado, which might not ever happen. Because um, I think you to take it away from the incumbent, you really have to to yeah. do something special. Um, and O'Neill Cruz, like you know, if you're not familiar with O'Neill Cruz, he is a physical specimen. He it's- insane i i think he had the hardest exit velocity of any baseball player last year i know like he aaron had the, judge at shortstop or jordan walker at shortstop right yeah. like yeah with mason wins arm um yeah i mean this guy's just got every he has the he has the potential to be the best player in baseball uh yeah. it's just is he going to not strike out is his approach going to be okay and can he stick it short um to me, I wouldn't be surprised if he moves to center or moves to third or something like that. But I think, you know, he's young. He's talented. Keep him at shortstop. The Pirates have nothing to lose. Um, and, and I really think, like, if Key Brian and O'Neill uh, can do something, the Pirates, I'm not going to say that. I, will, I won't say that they'll be relevant all of a sudden, but they can beat their Pakota. They can beat their Zips pro- uh, uh, projections if those guys kind of come into their own. Yeah. Yeah. They they at least have some fun pieces to watch. They have almost no pitching. Uh, Johan Oviedo might end up being their best pitcher this year, um, but they 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 may have at least the dangerous heart of the heart of the lineup with uh, Brian Reynolds as well. They're still there. Yeah, yeah. Earlier we talked about they have catching prospects. I think the fun thing to watch with the Pirates this year is when does Indy Rodriguez uh, make his way to the big club. Um, knowing the pirates, I doubt he will break camp with it so they can get every ounce of, uh, service time. And, you know, he, he is yeah. a guy that also, we talked about the Cardinals motivate. I think last week they talked about the Cardinals motivation to break up Jordan Walker, because it is reasonable to, uh, assume that he will, you know, with the new CBA, he will make a top three rookie of the year finish and therefore earn a full year of service time. Indy Rodriguez is that guy too. Um, yeah. this guy, he is a, he's a catcher. He should stick a catcher. He should hit. Um, he, he kind of does everything well. Um, you know, I, I think that'll like, if you're a pirates fan, that's, that's the, I don't know, storyline to stick onto and to get excited yeah. for this year. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, we're experiencing it now. We just have a, a good team to go around it, but, um, you know, having fun, young prospects, it's, it's one of the fun parts of baseball that I think you get in, they don't get as much in other sports where you have these guys that you watch for years growing or come out of nowhere and explode on the scene. You know, it's a ton of fun. Yeah, I think an ongoing storyline for the Pirates is, is Brian Reynolds going to remain a pirate? They He requested the trade, like I said. Uh, the Pirates said no. Um, they aren't yeah. extending him. I think that this is going to be a story. There's, you know, he is a switch hitter. People are, you know, highly valuing uh, left-handed outfielders right now. Wouldn't be surprised uh, if somebody ponies up to get Brian Reynolds and prize him away. Uh, some some team trying to win um, sooner than later, um, and, and kind of the back and forth. And I think that that's, you know, that's the storyline. And then I guess the the question around the Pirates and that storyline is are the pirates going to use this season to push the franchise forward or are they going to just keep treading water at, you know, last place in the central or, or, you know, fighting for last place. Is this the year they take a step forward or, or not? Um, 
And well, if I was to bet, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say what we do with the Reds is we put a bet on it. So what's the line here, Ben, for uh, the Pirates? What do you what are you thinking? I I want because they do have young high end players that I like uh, Cruz, Hayes, Andy Rodriguez. Uh, I like Brian Reynolds. Um, I want to say over, but their pitching situation is so bad. Their pitching what prospects number? are what what number are you setting or when you're saying over like over what uh win total yeah that's what i was getting at okay yeah yeah you you said i want to say over but i don't know what you're saying over on so uh like 67 68 oh i don't know um i'd have to yeah sure sure okay uh, there, well you you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I told you totally just fucked up my train of thought. Uh, what was I saying? Well, I okay, don't know, they're, they're going to be a bad team. There, yeah, they're, they're going to be a bad team. To say. So I think last week with the Reds, we said over under sixty seven wins or something like that, and I think we both took the over on the Reds. So I'll say for the Pirates, what do you think? Over under sixty eight. Uh, I would say. Uh, I'm going to say over for them. Okay. I, I think G man Choi is a good signing. I think the young guys are going to hit a little bit, but the pitching just is so bad, but I, I think they'll, they'll overcome a little. Um, I'm going to say under young guys take a while to develop. I think they, and, and I have no faith in the pirates doing anything to, to put this team into a better position. <laughs> O'Neill so. Cruz might hit 40 bombs. That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, as you were saying before, I cut you off to uh, clarify a, a thing that didn't they're, matter. Um, so they're, you, they're the pitching projected. Is their projected win on fan graphs is 72. Okay. So let's let's put All the right. line there uh, and I'll readjust. And I'm going to say, ooh, I don't think they're going to get to 72. <laughs> so I'm going to yeah. say under 72. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think. uh 69 nice there you go all right uh well we'll see it'll be nice to play them a bunch um let's you want to move on to news from around the league let's do it okay um yeah so we're going to talk about world baseball classic but there were a few transactions that happened yep. uh this week that are worth discussing Somehow still no jerks and profar signing. He is still out there. Uh, yeah. which is so bizarre. I oh, you re, you remember last year with Conforto when we, everyone was losing their mind around the fact that Conforto hasn't signed, and then we learned after the fact that there was some sort of shoulder injury and he was getting surgery. It makes you think maybe there's something like that going on here. I, I would agree with you, but he is leading off for the Nether he le- led off for the oh, Netherlands yeah. last night. Yeah, yeah. And he right, looked fine. Right. Yeah. Um my guess is he's holding out for a multi-year and he's only getting one years or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe waiting for an injury to happen. Uh, he's still out there. Yeah. Before we get into the signings, I also want to call out, we just had a, a news about Justin Turner got hit in the face yesterday, Ow. had a massive laceration and should be out for a while. Although no broken bones. Um, I bring that up first off because ouch, it's news and, and Justin yeah. Turner's a very good player. Uh, but I also wanted to mention, this is just something that's been on my mind. I thought it was so weird that the Red Sox, obviously they did not sign Xander Bogarts. Xander Bogarts signed for a billion years and a billion dollars with the Padres. Right. The, I suppose the Red Sox pivot to Justin Turner, which is kind of an inth- insane thing to say. But the reason I say that is because there was a story that came out a few uh, days ago about how the Pirates we're aggressively pushing for Justin Turner to take over the number two, which was the former number of Xander Bogarts. It was not Justin Turner's former number, but they were like, it seems like they're trying to, I don't know. They're trying to imply that he's the new face of the franchise or something like that. Weird. But but the story kind of read is like, uh, it was highly, it was suggested that he should take that number um, for Red Soxy reasons. Um, I thought that Just was to strange. indicate like he this was this was a big thing that we did going and yeah. getting Justin Turner. Yeah. And Xander's strange. gone. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. He's done. He's gone. gone. His, yeah. <laughs> yeah. His number has already been given to someone else. Get over it. Yeah. Uh, 
And like Xander's not like a Hall of Fame like guarantee, but he's like flirting with that idea. He's a very good player for the Red Sox for a very long time. Just uh yeah, I don't know, just kind of a weird I I've been criticizing the Red Sox all off season and this is just more of that same. Yeah, uh, pile it yeah. on. But uh, all right, let's knock out some of these uh, very small signings that happened. Uh, The Rockies were busy. Uh, They really did nothing prior to this, but they signed uh, Mike Moustakas and Brad lefty Brad hand. Um, So those are signings that happened. Um, And then outside of that, the Rangers signed relief pitcher, Will Smith. Um, And that's, that's really all that's happened as far as that. Yeah, I mean that's where we're at now, right? It's just these for other than Profar, it's just these fringe signings. So yeah. there's not going to be much transaction news uh, after this for quite a while until we start to get to the uh, uh, trade deadline. Yeah, yeah, maybe somebody will get hurt in the WBC and uh, Zan- or uh, Jerkson will make a bag and that'll, there you that'll go. solve itself. Because I'm, I'm kind at this point, I just like want it to be over with. Like somebody sign them. Yeah. Yeah, we need to know. We have a dumb game that isn't even relying on it anymore, but it would still be nice to have some closure. I, that's I, yeah, just the the, the closure. How much would did make I beat better. in by? Yeah, yeah, I need to know. So let's talk about the World Baseball Classic. We already have games going. Um, yeah. I thought what we could do here, we're just going to touch on it briefly. We'll dig into the games as they get going a little bit more. So we've only had a couple now, and the, really the bulk of the games are starting throughout this weekend. Um, but I thought we give a brief overview of how it works. And then just touch on some of the bigger teams and the and what we're excited to see in this uh, World Baseball Classic. So uh, I'll start off by sort of explaining the pool system. There are four pools of teams, each pool consisting of five teams. In this first stage of the World Baseball Classic, every the the pools will all play within themselves. Each team will play the other four teams within their pool. The top two teams from each pool will progress to the next round, which will then play in a more standard tournament bracket style until we have a champion. Uh, So um, we've got, you know, the United States are in a pool with like Great Britain and Mexico and a couple other teams. And uh, there's that's how it's broken down. So we're just now getting started on it. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um, So. I'll say for me, the teams that I'm most excited for, first of all, of course, I'm rooting for United States. Uh, look out, Smart. you cheeky blokes in Britain. We're coming wow. for you. How yeah. about the, we're, we're, we're in the same pool as the Canucks as well, Canada, looking at you. Yeah. Tyler, look, Freddie. Tyler, Freddie, watch out. Um, yeah. And that I think the United States team is stacked, of course. Uh, and then I think after that, uh, it's hard not to root for the J- Japanese team. We've talked about them for like 20 minutes at the start of this with Otani and Newt Bar. It's a ton of fun. Um, but honestly, I think the best team is probably the Dominican Republic uh, team. Have you looked at their roster? It is insane. Top to bottom. It is. It is. Well, and I think it is uh, their position player group is next level. Uh I think the only position they might be a little weak at is catcher, um, but they still have two young, talented guys there. Um, but just to throw out some names, uh, Willie Adamas, Raf- uh, Rafael Devers, Wander Franco, Manny Machado, Cattell Marte, Jeremy Pena, Teoscar Hernandez, I'm, uh, Julio Rodriguez, Julio, Juan yeah, Soto. Yeah, Julio Rodriguez, Juan Soto. Um, it, it just it keeps going. Yeah, the, the team is Sandy impressive. Sandy Alcantara. It, yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. Their, their edge over the United States is on the pitching side. I, I do. That being said, I do think like don't shortchange what America is bringing. We have two of the best catchers in baseball. JT Real Muto and Will Smith are both playing. Um, Pete Alonzo and Paul Goldschmidt, Trey Turner, Bobby Witt, Tim Anderson, Nolan. Um, and, and I think we said this earlier, but any outfield that has Mookie Betts, and Mike Trout in it is in is the best yeah. outfield in the game, uh, and then those other positions could be filled by Kyle Tucker, Cedric Mullins. Um, I, I mean, the the team is stacked. Yeah. Well, like you said, though, it's when you you know the best pitcher is Lance Lynn, uh, Adam Wainwright, Devin Williams. Miles, I guess is probably Miles the best. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, it's rough. The uh, the the big problem with the team is the rotation, and it's rough because two of the five of them are St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, it's single games. You never know what could happen. It's not like they're not good pitchers, and those yeah. lineups are stacked. Uh, the way I've been kind of thinking about this is this is basically what we want from the all-star game because these teams are going to actually be playing each other and playing each other hard. So we're going to get to see what does it look like to have Mookie Betts and Mike Trout in the same lineup, same outfield, when they both are trying very, very hard to win. Yeah, And that's really what makes this fun, allowing the Major League Baseball players to participate, which they've not always been able to do, really opens this thing up and makes it a tournament that I think is worth watching. Even the games that uh, don't necessarily or aren't necessarily star studded with Major League players are still with some of the best players from around the world. It's a ton of fun, and I've been really looking forward to it um, ever since it was yeah. announced. It was coming back. You know, here we are. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know, like uh, we know, Yadi's pit, or, uh, coaching for Team Puerto Rico. Uh, team Puerto Rico has some good players throughout it. Yeah. Uh, Venezuela has some good players. Uh, Mexico. I mean, the there are some good teams in Japan and Korea. Like, I think you know, we don't know a lot of those names. They're not a lot of household names, but I think that team is going to be, or both of those teams are going to be really solid. And we'll get to look at some players who are probably going to be coming over to uh mlb fairly soon um yeah i also want to it, it, sorry it's easy to think of those leagues as like a lesser league and they often are considered that but then you got to remember that some of the best players of all time have come from those leagues shohei yeah. otani right like it's not like it's just inherently a lesser talent and also anything can happen in a single game yeah um all, yeah all i was going to add is i think the team that i'm going to have the most fun watching uh, not only because I am mildly connected to uh, the Czech Republic, but also the makeup and the story behind the Czech Republic team. Um, every single one of their players has a nine to five job. Uh, their manager <laughs> is a neurosurgeon. They are made of firefighters and teachers and lawyers and a bunch of just everyday schmoes. And they're in a pool with China, who is a, a lesser team. Australia, which has big leaguers, Korea and Japan, which we just talked about. Those teams are going to be stacked. So you you are literally having I mean, they're not you and I. They're they're like if you know, if we were athletic, um, obviously they're they're talented, but these are normal dudes playing in the World Baseball Classic and they, yeah. they won their qualifier and they are playing against real. <laughs> oh, well, here's what I mean to say is we're going to have a firefighter pitching a ball to Shohei Otani and <laughs> In a tournament, I mean, they they have to be the know. longest. They have to be the longest shot in the world to win. But yeah, you never know what could happen. And I would say, you know, if I'm, uh, uh, you know, Mister Firefighter, baseball player on the side, and I get to pitch to Shohei Otani, I don't care what happens. That alone yeah. is the, the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. As long as it doesn't come right back at me, <laughs> uh, that's the that's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. So. uh Cool. Well, yeah, we're really excited about it. And we'll we'll probably more at the top of the show as this gets going. And there's actually, you know, more complete, interesting games. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but just wanted to do this sort of primer for the WBC. Um, you can follow it through uh, at least like through the MLB app and and online. There's a lot of different ways to to follow these games. So uh, check it out. And if you're following, let us know. Who are you rooting for? Are you rooting for... Uh, we've got listeners all over the all over the world we're, we're learning about. So tell us, are you paying attention? Where are you from and what team are you rooting for? Yeah. And um, I hope to see them crushed under American <laughs> boots. <laughs> yeah. It's like the only thing that I have decided to be nationalistic about is, <laughs> is, the, US, <laughs> is the USA baseball. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we're going to wrap this up. But before we do, we have a segment to play. Ben, it's been a little while since we've done this. I've stumped you a couple times. Let's see if I can get you again. We're playing another round of Who Is This Guy? Who is this guy? All right. All right. So if you're new to the show, the way this works, I have a series of clues that uh, are clues towards a baseball player, a member of the St. Louis Cardinals, someone who at some point in their career played for the St. Louis Cardinals. The clues start very, very vague and get increasingly uh, less vague 
and Ben has to guess after every clue. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see where it goes. So bring it. The very first clue here for you. This player was born on March 15th, 1985 in Miami, Florida. March 15th, 1985, Miami, Florida. Okay. Uh, there's definitely some Miami players. Uh, the number one that's coming to my head, although I'm not sure if this aligns with his age. Uh, I'm going to say John J, a.k.a. the Chief Justice. <laughs> Ben, you've come back from a vengeance. You got it in oh, one. <laughs> oh, let's go. I thought he was very well known as a Miami player, but it's been yes. a little while. Yes. Um, so I thought I might I thought I Mr. might get you out of here. Five. Let's go. Yeah, got that you booty. Put, power. Can we put pump in some pit bull music underneath this right now? <laughs> no. Um okay. oh, we've man. got <laughs> request denied. Um yeah, so here I'll go ahead and read the rest of this the trivia for you. Man, I just aced you. You suck. Uh, I got you with Skip Schumacher like a month mm, ago. So let's. Mm, uh, mm. Um, all right, his twelve year career spanned multiple teams, including in no particular order: St. Louis, Chicago Cubs, San Diego, Kansas City Royals, Arizona, Chicago White Sox, and Los Angeles Angels. Wow, Anaheim. I didn't realize he moved around so much there at the end. Um, Next one, he led the league in hit by pitches in 2014 with 20. And in 2013, he led the league in center field double plays or double plays by a center. Field oh, wow. With, That's surprising. With, yeah, I think he played shallower, right? So he might have yeah. been able to pull off some of those, uh, you know, get him at second. Sure. Um, I always remember him for getting hit by pitches all the time. And he just had that giant wagon. You know, he's got that oh. booty power. So he was booty just power, leaning yeah. into it all the time. Uh, then the clues on four and five get incre incredibly obvious. So part of uh, uh, clue number four was part of the Memphis Mafia. Yeah. Remember that whole thing? And then oh, yeah. finally was not a former Supre Supreme Court judge, though he shared the name of one. <laughs> I figured I would get you. You would get it yeah. with that one if you had not already. Aren't they so. justices, not judges? I think it's both. Okay. But yeah. Probably <laughs> no, normally referred to as justices. Okay. Um, wow. You really sucked at this one, Nate. <laughs> wow. Way to go negative. You could just say you <laughs> did great. You don't have to bring, you don't have to drag me down. Yeah, and I'm also, always no, doing great. I, I did great too. Never take an L, Ben. <laughs> cool. At the very least, we both did great. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you know who else did great? Huh. Everyone who chose to listen to this podcast, thank wow. you all for being here. Oh my here. God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week as always. Um, thank you all for listening. Again, we will be on C70 shows. Meet me at Usual this week. So check that out and all of his cool content. Uh, reach out to us on Twitter at Talk About Birds or email us anything. We're always happy to chat. And until next week. Go Cardinals. Let's go USA.